Hello everyone and welcome to the next installment of Vericut Tech Tips. Today we will see two techniques to easily take measurements from your tool's driven point to any other objects. We'll start with the quickest and easiest one. We're going to let the simulation run a bit to put ourselves in a situation where we would need to make such a measurement. So let's say we would like to take a measure between the tooltip or the driven point of the scutter tool number 10. Notice that this tool is a face mill with inserts. In such a case, it will be hard to use the bottom plane of the cutter as most of those face mill tools have a concave dish at their ends. So let's pretend that we would like to verify the distance between this tool's driven point and a parallel face on the part. To do so, simply go to Excalibur, then in the Distance Angle group. There we'll pick the From as Component Origin, and we'll hover the mouse over the general area of the tool. Notice that Vericut will mark with a plus sign the location of the tool's origin. If I activate the display axis driven point zero, we can see that both the driven point zero crosshair and the component's origin plus sign are matching. This is because this tool has been assembled with its tool assembly's origin at 000. Now I'll let the simulation continue in order to show you the second technique you can use when the tool assembly's origin and its driven point are not matching. A similar situation like the first one, we need to measure from the tool's driven point to any 3D element. Picking the bottom plane of this tool is also out of question since it's a ball nose cutter. If we try our first technique, we'll see that the component's origin plus sign is not at the place we would like to use. It is at the gauge line of this tool assembly. I'll take a mental note of this tool's gauge length. We don't want to modify the tool assembly location in space since this is a master tool library and we're not allowed to modify it. I'm just going to turn off the driven point zero for sake of clarity. So what do we do? Simple, we create a temporary coordinate system. This coordinate system will be attached to the spindle. Once it is created, we'll move it along its z-axis by the amount of the tool's gauge length, which is 6.5 inches. And voila, we have a coordinate system that matches the exact location of the driven point. Since it is attached to a spindle component, whatever orientation and location the spindle will go, the temporary coordinate system will follow. Then it's just a matter of selecting CSIS origin instead of component origin as the from, and we'll be able to pick any measurement we want. Thank you for watching.